What are some NSFW history facts that don't get taught in school? In late imperial China, a concubine earmarked for SX by the emperor later at night would be pampered all day. When the night of the deed came, the palace servants stripped the girl naked, wrapped her in a silk blanket, and carried her to the emperor's bed to unwrap her there. This practice wasn't for imperial majesty's kinks. It was a security measure. Sometime earlier a concubine tried to assassinate an emperor during SX with weapons hidden in her clothing. The chainsaw was originally invented to lob off infected limbs faster than a scalpel. Every time you read a city was sacked, pillaged, taken by force or what have you, it almost always means mass rape, rampant murder and an orgy of violence and debauchery. Enslaving a population also pretty much the same thing. Men would be killed. Women and children would be abused. Tied up and sold off to be abused even further until they were discarded. Human history is swollen with the sufferings of the common people subject to thievery. Banditry. Wanton murder and abuse at the point of the sword. We're a pretty disgusting species. Queen Victoria instituted a system of certifying prostitutes as syphilis free. They were called the Queen's Ladies of the Night. Many prostitutes hung the certificate above their beds as a point of pride. The Egyptians used mice to help stop toothaches. The Romans used to use a sponge on a stick to clean their asses. The world's youngest mother was 5 years old. She went through puberty at a way early age and had a highly questionable father. In Aztec culture, avocados were considered as surely powerful and were restricted from virgins. Empress Wu Zixian made eating her out a prerequisite for an appointment. If you ever visit Prague, definitely go to the SX Machines Museum. I felt so naive of how unaware I was about how horny we as a species have been. Since. Literally. Ever. The steam powered DLDO is a triumph of mechanical engineering. The political smear campaign against Marie Antoinette involved a lot of dicks. Roman brothels had pictures of the prostitute specialties above the door to their room. Ossie will hold you while you cry. The father of microbiology. Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek. Comma the daddy of microbiology. The inventor of the bra had a pet whippet named Clitoris. Alexander the Great had 361 concubines, official prostitutes. Four more and he would have won for every day of the year. Yeah but that would be excessive. 12 year old Pocahontas used to entertain white colonists with nude cartwheels. This is actually one of the few things we know about her that's indisputable. French President F registered sign licks for a went out via death by blowjob from a mistress. Edit. Fixed spelling. If you die while nutting you are both coming and going. Edit. Early colonizers of the United States used corn cobs as toilet paper. Edit. This is now my number 2 comment. James Joyce wrote exceptionally graphic letters to his so. D. Jorovi. Former king of Portugal. Had a royal emsturbator. Ah yes the hand of the king. Cleopatra did butt stuff. Powdered wigs were invented to cover up head sores caused by syphilis. Syphilis also eventually destroys your nose. Which is why old Timmy writing frequently refers to how prominent a person's nose is while expounding on their moral character. Essentially. This guy is super great. He doesn't even have syphilis. There was a Greek general who was supposed to lead a major expedition to Sicily. The night before he left he got wasted and walked around Athens with his other drunk friends and knocked all of the penises off of the statues in Athens. This caused him to be arrested. He missed the expedition and they lost almost all of the men they sent to Sicily because only he knew the plan well enough to pull it off. Also be AIDS. He then proceeded to bang the wife of the Persian Emperor Satrap. Edit. Archaeologists find lots of poop. And lots of dildos. The first person who was sentenced to the electric chair died horribly. Someone forgot to wet an essential part of the machine and he ended up with bubbling skin. 
melting eyes and a foaming mouth among other things. The amount of electricity was so strong that he began to convulse violently. So much so that he weakened straps. He twitched so erratically that his index finger dug through the palm of his hand. The entire room smelled of burning flesh. And the stench even permeated some clothes. Many people who came to see had fainted during the execution. But do you know what's even more horrible? They heard him wheezing after they turned the electricity off. Edit. Thanks for the gold and silver. Don't know if it's already been said. But Edgar Allan Poe married his 13 year old cousin when he was very much older than her. Greeks were heavily into sodomy on both essays. Women were only required to be virgins virginally prior to marriage. Every other orifice was fair game. Are the loophole. If you look up Edward Russell in history books or even Wikipedia. You learn about his military service. Including Admiral of the Royal Fleet for some famous battles. What they don't teach is that he threw a party so epic it's still being talked about 300 years later. In 1694. He threw a party for officers. And with 6. 000 guests coming. Wanted to make it special. So. He made the world's largest cocktail. Drained the garden fountain and used that as a giant punch bowl with hundreds of gallons of liquor. Over a half ton of sugar. Thousands of lemons. Etc. He hired bartenders to paddle around in boats. Scoop it up. And serve it to attendees. At some point. It began to rain. So they put a tent up over the fountain to prevent it getting watered down. About a week after they started. They had drank every last drop. The fountain was dry. And the party was over. President Lyndon Johnson was obsessed with his dick and loved to show it to people. He called it Jumbo. So President Johnson liked to show people the President's Johnson? During the age of sail. Any time a large ship would come into port. The men often wouldn't be allowed shore leave for a few days. So you would see small boats packed with prostitutes heading out to the ship at mooring. Larger ships of the line would have over 500 men aboard so there could definitely be a couple hundred ladies brought aboard behind the captain's back. And with virtually no privacy aboard. You would have spaces in the ship with hundreds of couples going at it at once. There were definitely a lot of captains that didn't allow any women aboard. So the sailors on those ships would just have to wait until they could go ashore. Catherine the Great had a parlor room filled with explicit erotic furniture she commissioned personally. We're talking blowjobs carved into chairs. An end table where giant dicks torrential cum shots were holding up a marble countertop. A woman getting eaten out by a demon on a throne. Home girl had taste. Henry V.I.E. Aside from his three legitimate children. Had at least six other illegitimate kids with various mistresses. There is also a suit of armor made for him on display. And the codpiece alone weighs one. Newton was so dedicated to his work and abroad fun so much that many people believe he died a virgin. At 87 years old. And by work I don't mean revolutionizing physics and inventing calculus. I mean alchemy. His main focus was turning lead into gold and making the philosopher's stone. I think Newton is a very good example of someone in history who probably had autism. Before autism had the name. Ben Franklin was a super sx freak and loved to tell younger dudes to have sx with older, old, women. Ben Franklin was the original MILF hunter. Edit. What the fck is khaki oin? And why does everyone feel the need to comment it? Edit 2. Okay. Thank you. I've been informed. In the 12th century a philosopher named Peter Abelard challenged the church teaching on essential morality pointing out that no ceremony of man could make an inherently immoral act moral. The act would have to be already generally moral. Therefore sex before marriage really couldn't be considered a mortal sin. He fell in love with the wrong woman and had his nuts cut off. This made him angry and sad. He then wrote a book. Not necessarily NSFW. But pirates were one of the first people to have a health care plan of sorts. If you lost an appendage. There was a predetermined pay for everything that was lost or maimed. Also. 
there was a pretty large number of female pirates. For a time when women had little to no value in the workplace. The loss of a limb payment is depicted in the Errol Flynn movie. Captain Blood. The one legged pirate receiving the GB gold is played by my grandfather. His leg was machine gunned off on the 11th of November 1918. Moved the family to Hollywood and was an extra for many years. Napoleon would ask that his wife. Josephine. Not bathe for several days when he knew he would be coming home. My man's liked a stinky stinky lady. On a lighter note after she died he kept a clipping from her flower garden in a locket on his person until the day he died. The point here is you go to both extremes if you really love someone. At the Battle of Agincourt most of the English archers fought pantsless because they had serious diarrhea and were literally shitting themselves as they fought. They won too. Anne Frank's diary talked a lot about masturbation, But most of it was edited out. Here is an excerpt of such a part of the diary. Comma until I was 11 or 12. I didn't realize there was a second set of labia on the inside. Since you couldn't see them. What's even funnier is that I thought urine came out of the clitorises when you're standing up. All you see from the front is hair. Between your legs there are two soft. Cushiony things. Also covered with hair. Which press together when you're standing. So you can't see what's inside. They separate when you sit down and they're very red and quite fleshy on the inside. In the upper part. Between the outer labia. There's a fold of skin that. On second thought. Looks like a kind of blister. That's the clitoris. And about her lesbian crush on one of her friends. 1. The creator of the vibrator was George Taylor. It was originally made as a steam powered device that was used to cure a disease called hysteria. By massaging the pelvic region. 2. Empress Wu Zetian of China asserted her dominance over male officials by making them kneel before her and pleasure her orally. 3. For a long, long time Royal European women gave birth in front of spectators. Who would pour into the bedchambers to watch the babies arrive. 4. Plymouth Colony of British North America, New England, convicted and hung a young man committing bestiality. It was one of the first hangings in the New World. The 16 year old Thomas Granger was hanged to death for indulging in a buggery with a mare, a cow, two goats, many sheep, two calves, ostrich, allegedly, and a turkey as mentioned in the court report from 1642. His hangman was one John Holmes. 5. Nelson Rockefeller. Former vice president of USA. Suffered a heart attack and died while having sex with his 25 year old assistant. He was 70. To save ammunition. The Khmer Rouge started to execute people with pickaxes in the killing fields. Cleopatra was nicknamed Regina Meritrix, the queen of the WH Res. High class WH Res though. Not slum prostitutes. Jenny Wade was a prostitute and a madam. She wasn't a kind and generous soul who was treating the wounded from both sides of the Battle of Gettysburg. She was offering her services to both sides. When you take the bus tour with recorded audio. The storyteller narrating the tour is supposed an old timer reflecting on the battle. When you pass the Jenny Wade house, still standing. He says something like. That's the Jenny Wade house. Jenny was a friend of mine. She was a friend to many. I always liked that subtle nod. In any history course the rampant upping done by most occupying forces around the world, e. g. Japan in World War II. Pretty much every town village city that was invaded from the time of the earliest civilizations. It's been like this. Still happens today. Outside of modern professional fighting forces. Arping and looting was always accepted as the best perk of being a soldier. French poet Victor Hugo got it on so much that the day of his funeral all the brothels in Paris closed because everybody was too busy mourning him. Ancient Greece society was all about butt sx. Gets glossed over or referred to in a passing and vague way. In fact. Part of the curriculum of well off kids. From fancy Athenians to tough Spartans. Was being poked from behind by your teacher tutor. 
Child grooming was more or less systemic. A necessary step in life for most men. Nixon's catchphrase was. When you have them by the balls. Their hearts and minds will follow. Apparently he had that on a plaque in the White House. The German army was given methamphetamines during their invasion of France, Belgium, Netherlands in 1940. This was the other part of a sublet screed that isn't really talked about. For the first three days the German army advanced without rest. No stopping or sleeping for three days straight. If you got tired they just gave you more meth. The drug may have also played a role in why the Panzer divisions refused to stop even after being ordered to several times by high command. They only finally stopped advancing when Hitler personally ordered the halt. TLDR. An army of methed up Nazis took down the largest army in Europe in a few weeks. Edit. Netflix has a good documentary series on it now. Plato thought that the babies inherited everything from their parents and therefore from perfect parents having intercourse at the perfect moment would born perfect babies. Imagine a equilateral triangle with the parents in two of the corners and the baby in the third. He thought that these babies would be the superior race. Napoleon's penis was preserved and sold for around $45. Benjamin Franklin slept his way through the wives of the French aristocracy. Who in return convinced their husbands that supporting the American Revolution was a good idea. President Lyndon B. Johnson, as the name implies, was infamous for talking about his penis and boasting how big it was. There's a recording of Johnson arguing on the phone with pants manufacturers about how they failed to leave enough room for the crotch. And actively creating a detailed verbal picture of his presidential groin. When my high school history teacher asked the class what we knew about Johnson. This actually got taught to me at school but I think it still fits. At the Battle of Stamford Bridge in 1066 there was allegedly this absolute unit of a viking that was killing Saxons left right and center using only an axe. Killing roughly 40 Saxons. He was holding the bridge for some time before he was killed. And this is still somewhat debated amongst historians. By being stabbed in the balls by some Saxons that were floating below the bridge underneath the Viking. Edward I.I. of England was a suspected homozool and rumored to have been killed by having a red hot poker shoved up his anus. Benjamin Franklin didn't care about his frumpy wife. So after all the 1776 independence fervor, he moved to France without her. He said hasta la vista. And then banged a lot of broads. Four popes actually died while having Ezul intercourse. Or as a result of. Pope Leo V I died of a heart attack during. And Pope Paul I I while being sodomized by an altar boy. Allegedly. Two others were supposedly murdered by the cuckolded husband of their lovers. Thomas Jefferson had six kids with one of his slaves. Benjamin Franklin makes Deadpool seem PG. He slept with and or hit on anything that moved. Sailors literally tried to take him to court for harassment. He published a treatise on why you should sleep around with older women, and I kid you not. One of his points were that they aren't that bad if you put a bag over their head. And they're less likely to kiss and tell. Dude had no shortage of lovers, both girls and boys. From now on. You will always undestined his smile on the $100 bill. Why vibrators came into existence. In the Victorian era. It was believed many women suffered from hysteria and the treatment was to go to your doctor and be manually. Unmasturbated to climax by the doctor and his professional digits. Apparently it got so popular that many doctors were getting hand cramps and so one of them came up with a genius idea of vibrators. There's a movie about this that I watched. Fascinating. When I have a little more time I will look for the name of the movie and update this post. In the U.S. A lot of slaves were raped. A lot a lot. Our pay was super super common. Unfortunately. In what school was this not taught? Queen Elizabeth I reportedly attempted to flirt with and seduce the Spanish ambassador by bending down so he could have a view of her cleavage. She was in her 60s at this point. The ancient Egyptians used bees in boxes as vibrators. I also remember hearing a discussion about all the kinky things the ancient Egyptians did with goats. 
Apparently goats were a fertility symbol or something back then. The Ancient Roman Empire. Like many people know. The people loved theater. But they never enjoyed fake shows. So. Like many people know. The fighting in a show was between slaves and everyone dying in the story. Dies in real live. Just on stage. But like many people don't realize. Also the SX scenes in theater were real. Actor was a job for the lowest rank. Like a slave. Murder on stage. While it did occur. Was relatively rare. Too expensive most of the time. Just like gladiators rarely being killed. The Romans recognized that slaves had value that would just be lost if you just killed them. That's just not true. Like most of the ancient world Rome was rife with actors who would play the same roles. Often with the characters dying. Comma over and over again. Maybe occasionally we hear of a punishment that might sound like this for a criminal but it was certainly not a regular attraction. Edited to add. Very few non-mime shows had female actors and a folk etymology of obscene is on senior so literally off stage. That stuff just did not feature in theater. When you hear about people being tarred and feathered in the American Revolution. They didn't survive. Us Americans had that tar boiling. And we let them in feet first. Then dip their corpse in feathers. We've always been big on deep frying. That's not true. The tar in question was often pine tar. Not the kind of black tar we use to pave roads. You can see pictures of people who have been tarred in feathers. It was uncomfortable and humiliating. But not fatal. The rape. In the Roman Republic there was a rampant problem of phallic graffiti across Rome. Regina is Latin for a sheath for a sword. Now here's a genuinely little known fact, mainly because the English translation is a little translation and the actual meaning gets lost. Carmate is one of the most, if not the most famous Muore Haka, native New Zealand war dance. It's about a warrior who is running away from an opposing tribe. He dives under a beating heart to hide and when he looks up he is face to a face with a women's hairy vagina. That's right. That intimidating war dance the All Blacks did before a rugby matches. In part. About a hairy vagina.